In 20 years, some things age well. They develop flavor, depth, color, character, or value. Their use and their diminishment in quantity drive their desirability. In 20 years, some things become uncommon, or rarities, objects that others desire. Some things, however, don't age so well, like fruit, or my taste in music and fashion. My, my music hits me so hard, makes me say, oh my lord, thank you for blessing me with a mind to rhyme and... All right, I'm just going to stop that there and apologize for that little sidebar. Because after 20 years, it's a near certainty that no one wants any of those things that I just mentioned. The Nikon D1, it sits somewhere between those opposites. For some, this will be like a fine scotch with depth and character, and it will be best enjoyed pure and in the smallest of quantities on occasion. For others, the D1 will seem like a basket of apples forgotten on a high shelf in a garage. In 1999, Nikon released the D1 to the market as the first DSLR with a semi-affordable price. Prior to the D1, DSLRs had been film bodies with small sensors installed on very large battery packs. The Nikon D1, in a way, was no different as the camera was built on the F5 chassis and the internals have residual film era DNA, such as moldings for a film cassette and take-up cylinder. The batteries were large, and today the conversion for them relies on 18650 batteries. And the D1 was also heavy, built to physically withstand the harshness of professional use. The electronics, too, could withstand whatever was thrown their way. The batteries, not so much. And today the batteries are the most significant issue with using a D1. Converting a D1 battery pack to 18650 can be done and is frankly the only hope these cameras have for a life going forward. And due to age and its status as a trailblazer, and having been developed at a time when no one truly knew what a DSLR should or could be, the D1 has some quirks. Some of the D1's quirks make it a joy to shoot. The viewfinder is incredible given the specs. The fastest shutter speed of 1 16,000th of a second is superb for freezing motion. The colors are fantastic, owing to the sensor using four pixel binning clusters to create each image pixel. The sharpness punches way above the 2.624 megapixel level, and the camera writes slowly and underruns the buffer frequently, which forces the user to slow down and think deliberately about the images they will take. Those elements of the camera, they have aged well and at least make it fun to use today. But some of those quirks have not aged well. Using an ISO beyond 200 adds unpalatable digital noise, which can only really be hidden with a black and white image conversion. The camera cannot be turned off while writing images to the CF card or every image following the one you're writing will be lost, even with a quick power cycle. The batteries are heavy, expensive, and last, at most, 120 shots under ideal conditions. When batteries age and die, they send the wrong amount of power to the camera and it only records plain white or dead black images or simply sensor amp glow, regardless of the settings being correct or not. And finding the equipment needed to make one of these run, specifically the batteries, a charger, and small CF cards, will be far more expensive than the camera's image results justify. When I bought my D1 in late 2019, it arrived without a charger or batteries. I bought a charger, but it turned out to be the wall connection for the camera and not a battery charger. And the first new Watson battery that I bought was unable to hold a charge. I found a second charger and bought two more batteries and on the day that I was able to power the D1 on and verify that it even worked, I had invested almost $250 in the stuff needed to see if a $60 camera worked. So using a Nikon D1 today, and really at any point in the future after today, 
makes no practical or financial sense except for eccentrics, hobbyists, fools, and people who dreamt of one of these when they were new but couldn't afford them, right? Well, not really. The D1 is an incredible tool for digital photographers who want to learn patience. Like film cameras, like large format cameras, especially though not to the same degree, the D1 needs a slower pace and a slower workflow. Spending time composing your images in your mind before taking them is a mandatory practice when using the D1 successfully. And the digital noise at any sensitivity faster than the camera's native sensor sensitivity of 200 ISO introduces color distortions and shadow detail loss that today's image viewers would find unpalatable. And in all likelihood, when this camera was introduced, that was the case too, with high ISO images likely being reserved for black and white conversion for newsprint work. And the sensor too has a narrower exposure latitude than modern slide films and frankly, most old slide films. Using the Nikon D1 for anyone spoiled by the ease of modern digital imagery will be an exercise in frustration and heartache for a time. In Photoshop CS6, the D1 has less than one stop of correction ability in RAW, highlights are unrecoverable once they're blown out, and shadow detail recovery is limited to about 35% on your slider because anything beyond that's going to lead to bands of magenta noise. The D1 will teach you about precision in your exposures and your settings because any variation from precision will impair or destroy your images. The exposure bubble which results in usable images with the D1 is small. My newest digital cameras as I write this script are the Pentax K1 and Sony A7S II, and they are far from the newest cameras on the market. The K1's images have more image adjustment latitude and raw editing than Photoshop CS6 can provide. The A7S II at high ISO functions better than many cameras made in the five or so years after it do at mid-level ISOs. Those cameras are easy to use, especially compared to the D1. It's the difference between using a Tesla Model S in self-drive mode and a 1960s muscle car with a gated shifter and no power steering. But the Nikon D1, it will teach you about photography. That's what these old cameras do. Modern cameras are like eager busybodies. They want to do everything for you, provide unlimited editing flexibility such that a photographer need not possess much or any skill at crafting and exposure. And then those cameras keep the secrets of how the image is taken for themselves. Old cameras, they want to pass on their knowledge, pass on a piece of the era in which they were made, and do so in a manner that requires the user to have or to learn photographic skill. And the Nikon D1 maintains that, something that I believe very few, if any, cameras after it do, at least to the same degree. As for images from the D1, truly they are all you need if your work exists solely on social media. And the image size and quality for social media work vastly exceeds that of many modern cameras because the images don't need to be meaningfully downsampled for smartphone display. That reduced compression means that the D1's images in their native unadjusted size are ideal for sharing online, even if the maximum print resolution of one of these images is only four by six inches. The D1 sensor is larger than a 1080 high def display, though as the black letter boxing on this video still images shows, the D1 does not create images larger than a 4K UHD display. And so yes, I did on purpose not resize these images, but instead chose a black box for this video. Enlarging the images past full size for a 4K video would have taken away a great deal of the detail and image character that they provide. Images from the D1 are not large, but they are sharp. They carry good contrast, and the D1 renders warm colors, especially, better than any other digital camera I've used. That owes to the pixel binning. I don't know how Nikon did it with this camera. 
how they made the images work like they do, but darn it if I didn't wish that someone besides cell phone makers was doing this today. Unfortunately, camera makers have gotten the idea that megapixels supersede image and color quality. Imagine what a photo from a high resolution full frame 36 or 49 megapixel sensor would look like with pixels binned in the same manner as the D1. No one comes to the Nikon D1 by accident today. No one uses it seriously without intent, direction, and objective and purpose. Like a smoky scotch, the D1 is an acquired taste. Like parachute pants, it's a bit out of place in public today. Not everyone will love it, and many people would dislike the shooting experience. Yet the Nikon D1 remains, today and in the future, a tool for eccentrics, fools, and those who want to listen to the whispers of a previous time in camera history to see what they can glean and to become better photographers for it.